So this class is Cancer 1. Cancer 1 will focus on the risk factors, uh, pathophysiology, and some of the complications of having cancer, the treatments such as chemotherapy and radiation. And then the following class, class 18, will go into more of the exercise testing and prescription. So what is cancer? It's uncontrolled, rapidly dividing abnormal cells. And um, malignancy is where it moves to other areas of the body. So cancer needs to go through um, proper diagnosing and staging before treatments begin. So stage zero is called in situ, where it's localized. So it's just in that particular organ and it hasn't moved to any body parts. Stages one to three, it may be a, a tumor that's greater in size. It may have moved to um, other tissues. It may have invaded the lymph nodes. And then stage four is where the cancer has spread to other distant organs, or it's called metastasize. So for example, with breast cancer, so if breast cancer has metastasized, the, there will be breast cancer cells in other organs, such as the liver or to the bones or to the brain. So it's actually that type, specific type of cancer cell that moves on to other places of the body. There are different types of cancer. There are many different kinds. That's why it's so difficult to find a cure. So carcinomas are cancer, cancers that are endothelial type cells. Sarcomas occur in connective tissues and bones. Lymphomas, most of us have heard of Hodgkin's lymphoma or non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, happen in immune tissues. Uh, leukemias develop in white blood cells. And of course, with all cancers, you know, there has to be a prognosis and we'll talk a little bit about that. You know, the cancer can go into remission to where there is no current sign of disease. But unfortunately, cancers can recur. Um, and depending on the stage, many stage four cancers, uh, people don't have long-term survival rates. So let's take a look at this slide. You know, cancer tends to involve mutations. So what happens? So when you look at what, you know, a mutation inactivates the genes. So the genes are either turned on or off, but the interesting thing is the genes are turned on or off by oftentimes that are behavioral, or they could be environmental when we talk about the risk factors. So lifestyle has a lot to do with what switches the genes on or off. So the cancer starts off very small. It's just locally. Then the, um, once the cell starts to invade tissues, it can invade other tissues. It can start to spread. And then um, in the last stage, you can see what happens. The cells get into the bloodstream and then the client ends up with metastatic disease. So when a person is undergoing diagnosis of cancer, they will do many, many different tests. They will do MRIs, they will do CAT scans, PET scans, you know, biopsies. So when a pathologist is looking at the types of cancer, so you can see cancer cells look very different. And so that is oftentimes where they really get confirmation of cancer is from the pathology report. So you can see they sometimes are not very well defined. They may be disorganized. The nuclei can look very different. So there are many different ways that cancer can be uh, diagnosed on a pathology report. Risk factors for cancer. So if you take a look at this list, there are very few things here that are not modifiable. So a lot of these things are behavior based. You know, if you, the second bullet point says genetics. A lot of people think that if they have the genetics for cancer, they're going to get cancer. That may or may not be the case, but a lot of cancers you can see are impacted by behavioral risk factors. And of course, you can't do anything about increasing age. You know, that's a non-modifiable risk factor. But people can definitely do something about tobacco, diet, you know, particularly you know, diets that are in high fat, that are low in fruits and vegetables. There are pretty good data to look at uh, prostate, colon, and uterus. 
physical activity, very strong data to look at risk of colon cancer, esophageal cancer, some with breast cancer, um, chemical exposures, tobacco, sunlight for skin cancers, occupational chemicals, the HPV virus, so that causes cervical cancer, hepatitis B and C, HIV viruses cause cancer, exposure to hormones, and what a lot of people tend to miss is alcohol. Even moderate alcohol consumption can increase cancer risk. So alcohol may be good for some uh, to lessen heart disease risk, but it may not do anything as far as cancer. It may actually increase your risk of cancer.